Reactivity is the key for all things shiny. With reactivity, you can control when your app should react or also in a lot of cases when it should not react. That's just as important. And all of this can be done with concepts from the reactivity. And in today's video, I'll show you how that works. As always, we start with an empty app skeleton and let's throw this with some inputs and outputs so that we can work on the reactivity then. Here, we're just going to fill the user interface with a slider input first, which we call slider. It's supposed to be called slider and it can pick a value between one and 100. And right now it's picking 50. Also, we're going to throw in an action button. This action button function will produce a button. We call the ID behind that button and we also label the button as button. I know, very creative but let's just go with this. Let's use a simple text output again and let's call the ID text. And if we execute this now, as we are in Positron, we have to print this, of course. And now if we execute this, we see that we are thrown into the viewer and we have a button. We can drag things and we can click the button, but of course nothing happens yet because on our server side function, nothing is specified yet. So let's change that. Let's use the output and let's access the text output. And there we want to render this using the corresponding render function to our output and here that's render text and now let's throw in a bit of R code and here what we could do is to just from the inputs let's just throw in the currently selected value of the slider so if we now re-execute this we have to first close the other app if we now re-execute this we see that our app reacts now and what we can also do and this will become clear in a second why I'm doing this here what we can also do is print in the button input so let's throw in the input and let's Let's use the button and now if we re-execute this then we see now that everything still works the last return thing of our R code is the slider so this is why the number goes into the output but if we look into our session we see that whenever we have dragged the slider here we see that something is returned namely the input of the button actually let me throw the viewer in here let's throw it in here so that we can see both in tandem so as I now drag this you see that this is currently updating and when I even click the button you see that now I get a one here. So whenever either the button is clicked or the slider is dragged then this whole code chunk here is executed. That's important to understand from a reactivity concept. We have a few inputs and they are used inside the render text and you could think that if one of the inputs changes only the part that actually uses the input is re-executed but that's not the case. What happens is that this whole rendering chunk is then re-executed. So that's why you can see outputs when I only drag the slider. You can see here that this thing here was printed again. And that's because the render text fired and therefore this printing thing here happened. All right, cool. So now we have an app that technically works, but the button is super useless. I mean, it is there and it does something in the console, but really there's no point in having that. What would be much better is if the output would only generate on the click of a button. So let's control the reactivity here and make sure that only this happens. So with reactivity, we can control more of when things should or shouldn't fire. Let's try to render the text only when the button is clicked. What we can do for that is to use the require function. Inside of our code chunk, we can use the require function. And in there, we throw in conditions that are supposed to be met before the remaining code is executed. So what we want to do here is to check whether the input button is larger or equal than one, which means that the button was clicked. So if we now save this and restart the app we see now that we don't have an output immediately and even if we drag the slider here nothing happens and we also don't see anything in the console that's because this whole code is not executed because this requirement wasn't fulfilled we could even move this down a line and re-execute this whole code then you'd see that in the beginning this code this printing of the button is actually executed but we still don't see an output this means that the R code must have stopped here and that's the purpose of the require function it allows you to stop at the place where this requirement is put so now if i drag this this still doesn't change anything in my user interface but now once i click the button we see that all right now i do have this 49 value in here but maybe you already see what's wrong with our code you see this condition here right now that we have clicked the button once it is always fulfilled this means that this whole code chunk is fulfilled when 
I drag the slider now. See how the number updates even though I haven't clicked the button? That's because we have programmed it that way. We have programmed that the requirement is that the button was at least clicked once. This is now fulfilled so now the app always updates. But in a lot of cases, in particular in combination with buttons, this is probably not what we want to do. We probably only want to display or calculate the new thing once the button is clicked and we only want to repeat it when the button is clicked again. So what we can do here is to isolate specific things inside of our rendering function. For example, we could isolate this thing here using the isolate function. And then if we re-execute this whole code, then we see right now the requirement of having clicked once isn't fulfilled. So let's click it. Now we see the currently selected value in the slider. But now as I drag the slider, nothing happens. And that's because we have isolated this instant of input slider. Had I used input slider at some other place, let's just throw in another line here that uses input slider, then you'd see that after the button is clicked, everything once again updates. That's because we have an unisolated slider in here. So technically, if you'd use this variable input slider multiple times, you'd have to isolate it every time. So we've learned how the isolate function can help us to, well, isolate things but it's not particularly nice to use isolate over and over. Instead, it would be great if we can just tie all of the calculations to one specific event. And this is where the bind event function comes in. You see, what I want to do is to bind this whole thing or the execution of this thing to specific events. And what I can do in Shiny is to take this render text and pass it to the bind event function that binds this whole rendering to a specific event. And here the event is a change in the input button variable. So whenever a change of input button is detected, this whole thing will re-execute. And with that, we can re-execute this code here. Now we still have our requirement and once we click the button and change the value of the slider then we see that the number is only updated when the button is clicked. Also you can see that the print statements don't show up when I drag the slider even though the requirement happens only after the print statement which means that I can get rid of this requirement here. So with that I re-execute this. We see now that nothing happens until I click the button and then the new number is displayed and also so in the console, my input is printed. As you can see, the bind function is really helpful to control reactivity, but there's also another one that does a slightly different thing, but mostly similar. The function I'm talking about is observe event, and let's see how it works. But before I show you how that works and what the difference is, let me point out that Shiny brings you into the world of web development, which is a huge topic and I cannot possibly cover everything here. I will do more follow-up videos if you want to dive into Shiny, then I can really recommend the courses by Athletics by Verle, who has put in a lot of effort to teach you everything you need to know about Shiny. It comes in bite-sized lessons and they will go from very basic things to very advanced things like like even using a bit of JavaScript inside of your Shiny apps. It really is the full package, a really great resource that will teach you everything you need to know. And if you use my affiliate code, grab 10, then you'll get 10% of the courses and you'll also support this channel. So feel free to check out the link in the comments to see what the courses have to offer. And now let's check out what this bind event competitor function does. You see, instead of using bind event here, we can take this whole code chunk. Let's create a copy of this first so that we compare the difference. And then then instead of passing this render text into bind event, what one can also do is to use the observe event function. And as a first argument, it takes this event that needs to be triggered and then it needs code that is supposed to be executed. And here we copy in this whole output code that renders the text and now we can get rid of this other code here and see whether observe event does the exact same thing. So let's close this app and re-execute this and now if I click the button I see that I do have a 50 in here and now if I drag the slider I see that okay this number still updates and that's a shame with observe event you still have to use the isolate function to isolate things that you don't want to trigger immediately. So if I were to re-execute this here and now drag the slider nothing happens yet. If I click the button then I see that everything is updated and if I drag the slider again nothing changes and if I click the button then then the UI is updated again. So here observe event you'll see this often in the wild so this is why I'll show you this. Observe event used to be my go-to way to program with Shiny but ever since learning about bind events I have basically replaced all observe event functions with bind event and the main reason for that is because then I don't have to isolate things. Observe event can still be handled 
handy every now and then, but really in most of the cases I use bind event, but ultimately the choice is yours, which you want to use. Sweet. With this video, you should now have more control over the reactivity of Shiny app. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments. Of course, there's more Shiny stuff coming your way. So make sure to subscribe to this channel to get notified when the new videos are available. And also, don't forget about the athletic courses that will teach you everything about Shiny that I couldn't possibly cover here. So with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.